How do hackers actually steal passwords? And where on that spectrum are you vulnerable? In this video, I'm going to show you three levels of password hacking. A noob, a hacker, and a pro. And exactly how each of them tries to break into your accounts. By the end, you'll know how low-skill attackers are already dangerous, what more advanced attackers do behind the scenes, and most importantly, how to protect yourself at every level. Before we dive in, a quick but super important disclaimer. I'm going to describe real attack techniques and tools in this video. This is for education and defense only. Do not try this on anyone else's accounts. Do not test this on systems you don't own or don't have explicit permission to test. Doing this in the real world without permission is illegal and will get you in serious serious trouble. Let's hack some passwords. Safely. Imagine a modern co-working space. Big windows, lots of plants, people on laptops everywhere. In here we've got a freelancer on shared Wi-Fi, a startup founder logging into their company dashboard, and someone casually checking their personal email and social media. Our three hackers, the noob, the hacker, and the pro, are going to target one thing, passwords. Their goal is to steal them, guess them, or crack them after a data breach. Let's start with the bottom of the food chain, the noob. The noob hacker is not a genius. They're basically you. If you were slightly evil and watched too many sketchy tutorials, they don't know anything about cryptography, they don't have crazy hardware, but they know one thing really well, people are predictable. So what does the noob do? First, they try obvious passwords. They might use a simple web script or even just manually type guesses into a login form. Things like password123, summer 2024 your first name with a one two three at the end this is a basic form of a brute force or dictionary attack where they simply try common combinations then the noob learns about something worse credential reuse they find a big public list of old leaked passwords on the internet these are real email and password combinations from past data breaches to automate the process they use a tool called sentry mba or a similar account checker they load up their list of email and password combos and a list of target websites like Gmail, Facebook, and Amazon. They hit start and the program automatically tries each combo on each site. If a target reused that password, boom, the noob is inside multiple accounts and the victim has no idea. The noob might also dabble in phishing, but badly. They use a tool like Social Fish or a prepackaged phishing kit from a GitHub repository. These kits are designed to be easy to use. You just pick a template, like a fake Microsoft 365 login page, and the tool generates the files you need. The noob uploads these to a cheap web host and sends out a sloppy email with a link. Dear user, your account will be disabled. Click here now. Weird spelling, strange logo, sketchy link. To you, it screams fake, but someone somewhere clicks it. They land on the fake login page, type in their email and password, and the noob quietly collects it on the other end. The good news is, the noob is easy to beat. You win if you do just a few things. First, use unique passwords for every account. Not kind of different, not I add a number for each site. Actually unique. The easiest way to do that is to use a password manager and let it generate long, random passwords for you. If one site is breached, the damage doesn't automatically spread everywhere else. Second, follow some strong password basics. Aim for 14 characters or more. Don't base your password on your name, your birthday, your pet, your partner, your favorite band, or anything that appears on your social profiles. Third, turn on multi-factor authentication, MFA, wherever you can. That's where you log in with your password, and then confirm with a code, an app, or a hardware key. Even if a noob gets your password, they hit a wall at that second step. If you do those three things, you've already defeated a huge percentage of real-world attacks. But we're not done. Let's level up. Now we meet the hacker. This hacker is not content with password 123. The hacker uses OSINT, open source intelligence, which is just a fancy way of saying, I'm going to stalk your online life using public information. Instead of blindly guessing, the hacker studies you. They use tools like the Harvester or Maltego to pull in every piece of public data associated with your name or email, social media profiles, blog posts, forum signatures. They build a little profile. They learn your dog's name is Luna. Your favorite band is The Weeknd. Your birthday is May 17th. You live in Austin. Now they combine all of that into smart guesses. But instead of trying them one by one, they use a tool like Hydra or Metasploit to launch a password spraying attack. They take a short list of likely passwords, Luna 2017 exclamation mark, 
Austin Rock's 17 exclamation mark, the weekend 17 exclamation mark, and configure the tool to try each one once against many accounts on a target network. One try per account, spread out over time, is much harder for the site to detect. The hacker also upgrades their phishing game. Their email doesn't look like spam. They use a more advanced tool like GoFish or Evil Ginks 2. GoFish lets them craft highly convincing personalized email campaigns and track who opens them and who clicks the links. Evil Ginks 2 is even more sinister. It's a man-in-the-middle framework that can create a proxy of the real login page and also bypass MFA. When you click the link and log in, it captures your credentials and your session cookie and then forwards you to the real site so you see a normal dashboard and don't suspect anything. If you really want to learn how password hacking works, you need structured learning with quality content that shows you how these attacks work from the inside out. That's why I want to share an awesome website with you called Zero to Mastery. If you're interested in cyber but not sure which path to take, their career path quiz will give you a personalized roadmap that tells you exactly what to learn to hit your goals, whether that's ethical hacking, cybersecurity, or something else entirely. Their courses teach you step-by-step step how to become a security expert. You won't just learn about password cracking. You'll learn how to use some of the tools I have mentioned yourself, build your own scripts, and understand the networking fundamentals behind attacks. With their project-based learning methodology, you'll actually be building real-world security projects as you learn, not just watching. But once you start, at some point you're going to get stuck or have questions. That's why I love that they have an active Discord community with over 500,000 fellow students learning right alongside you. These aren't just people who will keep you accountable and share the journey. There are also instructors and TAs in there, ready to answer any question, no matter how small. Now most online communities are chaotic, but ZTM is organized with channels for every topic. Ethical hacking, password security, job hunting, resume tips, even finding an accountability buddy to stay on track. And if you're watching this video, you're probably curious about making this a career. Applying to jobs and interviewing can be daunting, but ZTM's Master the Coding interview courses will help you with practice questions, resume advice, and strategies to crush any tech interview. Because Zero to Mastery isn't just about learning, it's about getting real-world experience while you learn to build confidence and get results that'll help you turn this into a career. There's a reason they have a 4.9 on Trustpilot and have helped thousands of people land jobs in tech. Grab the exclusive discount for Zero to Mastery's top-tier hacking and tech courses from the links below. Take the quick quiz to find your perfect hacking or tech path, jump into world-class courses, learn alongside a community that pushes you, and build real projects with your new skills. Once the hacker gets into one important account, like your email, things escalate. Your email becomes a skeleton key. They search your inbox for a reset password. They see which services you've signed up to. They use your email to reset passwords on other sites. They may even set up filters so that alerts about suspicious logins get hidden or archived so you don't notice for a while. All of this is still within reach of a reasonably motivated person with some time and some tutorials. Not a movie hacker, just someone persistent. So how do you stop the hacker? You still need the basics from before. Password manager, unique passwords, strong MFA. But now you add a few more habits. First, lock down what you share publicly. You don't need your full birthday, your home city, your school, your kids' names, and your pets' names all out there on every platform. Limit how much personal detail is visible to the public or to people who aren't your actual friends. Second, again, let your password manager generate nonsense for you. If your password looks like a random string of characters, no amount of scrolling your Instagram is going to help the hacker guess it. Third, prefer app-based or hardware-based MFA instead of just SMS when you can. Authentication apps, push approvals, or security keys are much harder to attack than simple text messages, which can be intercepted with SIM swap attacks. Fourth, be suspicious of login links. Instead of clicking the login here link in an email, manually type the website address into your browser or use a bookmark you've already saved and always check the URL before you enter your credentials. One extra second looking at the address bar can save you days of pain. If you're still here, it's time for the final boss, the pro. 
the professional hacker is not wasting time trying to guess your password directly through a login page. The pro goes after the systems that store passwords. Most websites don't store your password in plain text. They store a hashed version, which is a one-way scrambled representation. When you log in, the site hashes what you type and compares that to the stored hash. A pro attacker targets a poorly secured website, an outdated server, a buggy plugin, an exposed database. If they succeed, they might download a massive list of usernames and hashed passwords in one shot. This is an offline attack, which is more prevalent because it allows the hacker to work at their own convenience without alerting the target. They still don't know the real passwords yet. All they see are hashes. But here's the trick. They can now guess offline at full speed using their own hardware. They use specialized tools and powerful hardware, sometimes even rented cloud GPUs, to run through enormous lists of candidate passwords. The king of this world is Hashcat. They'll use Hashcat with massive word lists like RockU or Seclists, but they're smarter than that. They use a tool like CEWL to crawl the target company's website and generate a custom word list of relevant terms. They might use a tool called Prince or Hashcat's own rules to combine those words in complex ways, adding years, symbols, and capitalization patterns. If the hash of a guess matches one of the stolen hashes, they've cracked that password. For more common passwords, they might use pre-computed rainbow tables to speed up the process. The stronger and more random your password is, the less likely it is to fall quickly. Short, common, or predictable passwords are crushed first. Long, random passwords might never be cracked before they move on to easier targets. When they crack one password for a given email address, they don't just log in. They automate trying that same email and password pair across many popular services. If you reuse that password anywhere, the pro attacker might gain access to multiple accounts in a very short time. A truly advanced attacker might go beyond passwords entirely. They might use malware to steal session cookies from your browser, which sometimes lets them hijack a logged in session without knowing the password at all. They might create highly targeted phishing pages that not only capture your password, but also ask for your one-time MFA code, and then replay both of those in real time to break into your account. They might drop keyloggers on compromised machines that record every keystroke, including your master password for your password manager if your device is infected. This is the level where they're combining breaches, malware, phishing, social engineering, and automation into one playbook. You can't control whether some random site on the internet gets breached, but you can control how much damage that breach does to you personally. Here's how to make life miserable for the pro. Use long, unique passwords for every service. 16 characters or more if the site allows it. Let your password manager generate random passwords that don't look like words at all. If your passwords are long and random and different for each site, hash cracking becomes much harder and password reuse attacks basically stop working. And keep your devices clean and up to date. Install updates. They close security holes that attackers love. Use security software if it makes sense for you. A lot of the really nasty stuff like keyloggers and certain types of malware depends on your device being vulnerable or neglected. So, three levels of password hacking. The newbie uses simple scripts tools like Sentry MBA and basic phishing kits. You beat the noob with unique passwords, strong basics, and MFA. The hacker uses OSINT tools like Maltego, automated attack tools like Hydra, and advanced phishing frameworks like GoFish. They pivot from one hacked account into many others. You beat the hacker by locking down what you share, using a password manager, using strong MFA, and being careful with login links. The pro goes after websites themselves, steals hashed password databases, and cracks them offline at scale with tools like Hashcat. They may mix in malware, cookie theft, and advanced phishing. You frustrate the pro with long, random, unique passwords, strong MFA, breach monitoring, and well-maintained devices.